first of all, um, welcome. And uh, it's fantastic to see everyone for the first of a, hopefully a, an ongoing series of workshops that uh, a little team of us are, are putting together. That's uh, Marcus, who you, who's already spoken, Angeline and Hans-Peter, uh, who, who you may know. Uh, but we're trying to make a, a series of workshops that hopefully will entertain and inform at the same time. Uh, there's a couple of little housekeeping things I just need to mention before we start. Um, could I ask you, uh, if you haven't already done so, to mute your microphones? Uh, one, you may have questions, and what I'm planning to do, um, Al uh, Alex uh, has said that he's happy to take questions. So if you put your questions in the chat facility, so if you, you hover down to the bottom of your screen, there's a, a chat facility. And if you want to put your question there, I can I can uh, zoom those, uh, put those back to uh, to Alex at, at the end. Um, and the final thing from me is we would like uh, we hope this goes well and we would like your feedback. So we have an evaluation. It's, it's really, really simple to to complete. So the first message in the chat facility will be the URL to the evaluation. So please wait until. <laughs> The, uh, the workshop has finished and then oh, you can open it now if you want, but in the chat facility, there's a little link. If you can't get it, whatever, then come back to me. I think you've got my contact details. I was the person who uh, emailed you early on. So without further ado, uh, I'd like to hand over to uh, uh, Alex Metcalf, who, um, who will introduce himself, but thank you, Alex, for uh, agreeing to take part in this uh, in this workshop and I'm sure you'll have a, a fantastic evening. So uh, over to you, Alex. Thank you. Thanks very much, Brett. Um, I'm just going to um, just double check. I can remain seeing you guys and keep uh, an eye on the, the waiting room whilst I'm getting my presentation up. So I'm just going to um, have a look and see if I make everything disappear. Um, yeah pretty much. Because um, we still got people joining, Brett. Yeah, sure. Um, um, now, okay. Right, I think I'm gonna get started. Um, and I think I might just pause every now and then if everybody's happy with me pausing every now and then just to check whether there's anybody in the waiting room. Um, just to make sure that we're not leaving people lingering in there. So I might pause every now and then and, and just check in on people and see if they're, they're waiting. Um, let's have a look. Okay. So um, I'm just going to share my screen now so you can see what I'm, I'm up to. Can everybody see my screen? Yeah, yeah, perfect. I've had a few nods from people. Um, so thanks for the introduction, Brett. So my name is obviously Alex Metcalf. I'm Cameras Learning and Discovery Manager. And what that means is I work with everybody across the organization, both in staff teams and volunteers within the governance structure to uh, increase and maximize the potential for learning opportunities when people engage with the campaign whether that be through uh, existing publications and our website or through activities at festivals making sure that in any way and every way we're trying to help people learn more about their favorite drinks with with camera so without further ado um, i'm going to start the presentation and as i said i'm just going to just double check um, whether we've we've got anybody waiting in the wings just yet. Um, I can't actually see that at the moment. So sharing my screen doesn't. Right. I'm just going to kick off and then I'll check back in a second. Okay. So thank you very much for making time for this presentation this evening. Um, as, uh, as Brett said, it's on uh, the Learning and Discovery Programme. Ah, fantastic. I'll just tell. <laughs> I'll save me pausing. Uh, it's on the Camera Learning and Discovery Programme, and more specifically, our new online learning platform, Learn and Discover. 
Um, here we go. So in terms of what the presentation is going to cover, um, we're going to be asking why are we talking about this and why now? Uh, the Camera Learning Discovery Programme from uh, 2019 to 2020. Uh, looking specifically at Learn and Discover, the platform. What is it? What are its features and benefits? And looking at Learn and Discover, looking forward from 2021 forward, um, thinking about external organisations like EBCU uh, member organisations and their ability to access the platform. And then thinking about some next steps. Where can we take this from here? So why this? Why now? Under the current very difficult circumstances, it's really important for us to think about uh, loyalty and advocacy via meaningful membership and participation in member organisations uh, like CAMERA and EBCU member orgs. Thinking about boosting uh, membership recruitment and re retention, a very difficult time globally. Uh, and scoping interest in access to learn and discover from external organisations like EBCU member orgs and exploring options for how external organisations can access Learn and Discover in the near future. So looking at the Learn and Discovery programme from 2018 to 2020. Uh, for 2018, um, I came on board as Learning and Discovery Manager. And very quickly, we launched our Learning and Discovery programme based on our membership attributes. For 2019 onwards, uh, we rolled out our Festival Discoveries programme, Discovery Zones programme. Uh, any of these items I can answer questions and I've got some supplementary information at the end of the presentation if anybody's interested or feels like I've, I've skirted over some things just for brevity's sake um, I'm not dwelling on all the individual items so from 2020 onwards uh, we've launched our pulling together campaign in response to the immense challenges posed by the pandemic for um, the pubs and brewing sector in Britain uh, we launched our Brew to You app and on a digital marketplace in your pocket for getting uh, beer and cider to, to um, uh, punters and, and vice versa. We launched our podcast, Pubs, Pints and People. Uh, we launched our virtual pub, The Red Online, for events and socialising and thinking about the idea of bringing communities together online. We launched our first ever virtual Great British Beer Festival. And of course, last but not least, the Camera Learn and Discover, our online learning platform. So Camera Learn and Discover, what is it? It's a consumer focused online learning platform featuring three tiers of learning content focused on beer, cider, perry and pubs. It's paywall protected. There's content for users every stage of the drinker's journey and it's optimized for mobile devices. So Learn and Discover, what are its features and its benefits? Pause and let some people in. Welcome to those who've just joined us. I'll continue the presentation. Just be aware that I am recording and you will be able to pick up on your own time and not miss anything. So Camera Learn and Discover, our online learning platform, has three tiers of free range learning. So it is structured, but users are uh, permitted to um, roam as they see fit and explore all the topics and content at their leisure. So in terms of the three tiers, we have the basics for beginners. All content in this tier is free to anybody, camera members, non-members. It's our honeypot and the overriding diktat is that um, there is no prior presumed knowledge. There shouldn't be any barrier for people accessing this information and building trust around the kind of content they, they can expect behind the paywall, uh, which I'll discuss in a second. The further two tiers, Learn More for Enthusiasts and Discover for Connoisseurs, contain incrementally more in-depth um, and more expansive and longer content, so longer articles, longer audio and video guides. But all content, no matter whether it's uh, behind the paywall, provides introductory sections, whether that be the first few paragraphs of an article or an introductory few minutes of audio or video, again, to provide people with um, the experience and the engagement of the platform without them having to commit first. So in terms of the content, what are the kind of contributors that we're looking at? Who are the people providing content? So for the professional um, content um, and for the volunteer content to a, a degree as well, um, we've got award-winning journalists and beer writers. We've got members of the British Guild of Beer Writers. Some of them are beer sommeliers certified. It's an increasingly diverse bunch. 
Uh, many of them are uh, published authors through the Camera Books stable of authors, uh, published and recognized externally. They're trusted voices. And these are some of the uh, people that we've had published just since April or coming up, uh, up into early next year. A range of faces you might recognize. And increasingly, um, there's going to be an international focus. One example, perhaps a Ruvenid Silva. She's a camera member, but she's been located in Texas for the last few years. Um, it's going to do some really great work for us in the next few, um, next few months. So a diverse bunch of people tackling a diverse range of subjects across a, a diverse range of media, engaging a lot of different people and a lot of different subjects. So very exciting stuff. As I said, producing a lot of content across media. We've got video, text and photo and audio articles across the different three tiers, engaging all sorts of different learning types. And all the content is protected in the upper two tiers by our membership paywall. Um, how does that work? So outside the paywall, um, we have introductory content. So in the first tier, it's all free. In the upper two tiers, um, the, the, the user experience is virtually the same, and that's what's really unique about it. Um, so this is what you might see for a middle tier um, audio guide by the award-winning writer Emma Inch in this case. And then inside the paywall, um, you see pretty much the exact same thing, but uh, you get the full version. So introductory content outside of the paywall, full version, inside the paywall, outside the paywall, introductory, inside the paywall, full version. Enables people to get almost the full experience and build trust and engage them further. So just to recap, it's an online learning platform, Learn and Discover. And in the short time we've been operating this year, under very difficult circumstances, we've had over uh, 70,000 page views, over 30,000 uh, unique page views, uh, over 50 items of exclusive uh, video content across a range of media. And we've also started to see some e-commerce conversions. So bringing in conversions and, and making some money for the campaign via our membership and uh, publication products. So takeaways for uh, 2020, again, online learning platform, three tiers of progressively complex, uh, exclusive content. Beginners is free to all, enthusiasts, and connoisseurs, upper two tiers is, is members only, but with free introductory content. All professional content is by trusted industry voices, and we provide pathways for volunteers to publish content alongside those. Uh, it's across a range of media. And at the moment, we've got over 50 items of content online by February of next year. So don't take my word for it. In the past few, uh, few weeks, we've had some really positive feedback uh, we've just been nominated for the uh, corporate communications category of the um, Guild of Beer Writers Annual Awards 2020. We'll find out in a few days whether we've got that, but we're a finalist and that's fantastic. Uh, Malt, uh, online publication, has written some very uh, flattering things about us in the past few days, um, saying that we're a, a central reading and viewing, so that, that's fantastic. Um, and we've also got um, a members and non-members survey embedded, rolling it out to be embedded in every page. So we can find out if people are enjoying the platform and provide them with an opportunity to input what they'd like to see and in what form. Um, and that's just one example of the kind of feedback we're getting at the moment from our members, which is really, really brilliant. I'm just gonna admit Jorg. Okay, so looking forward uh, to Learn and Discover 2021. At the moment, we're looking at over 60 items of new content um, by February 2022. Uh, a minimum of four new items of content per month, featuring a diverse and increasingly international stable of contributors. Um, and we're looking at developing access for external partners. So organizations like the American Cider Association and other member organizations abroad are starting to express interest in being able to access uh, our exclusive content. So we're, we're, we're identifying pathways for, for making that happen. So at the moment in 2020, we've been operating on a, what you might call a freemium model. So we offer some free content 
with the opportunity for people to take advantage of um, password accessed or in our case members only content. In 2021 we'll be looking at a sort of freemium plus model. Uh, we're going to be migrating towards a standalone site featuring our existing free range content plus developing uh, pay to learn modular courses. So the difference being that at the moment we provide a bit of structure, people know where they are, they know what comfort level uh, and level of uh, knowledge they're looking at and can expect, but they're free to roam around. And there's no commitment to a series of learning objectives. Uh, but what we're looking to develop in the next year on top of what we're already doing is developing pay to learn modular courses where you can see beforehand a list of learning outcomes and then commit to um, a, a small amount of money to, to, to pay for that little module. Um, and, and in doing so, by migrating to a standalone website, it provides us with the opportunity to enable access to external organizations and their members, such as the EBCU um, and the American Cider Association, just two, two sort of uh, parties that I've been, been interested or express an interest or there's been a conversation around it. Um, and we're looking to then invest the income from those kind of relationships. Um, submit something else. Into content that's relevant to them. So uh, everybody knows that camera members are at heart repertoire drinkers. They're very concerned about our heritage and um, British brewing and drinking cultural landscape but are very much people who like to learn more about the drinking and brewing cultures of other countries. Um, and they benefit from content that focuses increasingly on other countries and, uh, and, and what they brew and drink. Um, and with member organizations seeking access to learn and discover, it makes sense to invest any of that revenue into developing things like Eurocentric beer content um, for EBC member organizations. So how would that work? So we'd have to develop access agreements for, uh, for external partners via things like memorandums of understanding, um, featuring things like annual subscriptions per organization per year. Um, service delivery would be by a standalone platform, as I've discussed, secure member access, so password protected paywall access, um, country specific content for, for members or investing in in access to the platform, content by trusted voices from member countries. So, um, for instance, if uh, there was a, um, specific boy trusted voices for in the, the German, for example, brewing and drinking landscape, people that are published and regularly talk on the international stage or the national stage in Germany on uh, brewing and drinking, um, we'd want to be able to secure some content from them and then be able to see um, member countries reflected back into the content we feature. And again, it would make sense for us to be able to open up the volunteer content pathway to member organizations. So EBCU, for instance, if there's a membership organization um, wanting to put forward some of their, their lay members as, as experts to create some content, then that should be something we do as well. So looking at 2021 takeaways, we're gonna be having over 60 more items of content uh, by February, 2022. Uh, we're developing sponsored content. So at the moment, just for an example, uh, we're developing a, uh, a series of videos on home brewing um, in partnership with Johnny Garrett, who runs the Craft Beer Channel, um, and and uh, and, and, a, and a, a author from our um, home brewing book um, to develop a series of, of videos um, for for learn and discover. Also really ramping up the volunteer content. We're gonna have one piece of volunteer content a month um, for, the, for that period. Uh, migrating across to our standalone platform, which enables to be a lot more flexible and provide a better user experience. Developing some pay to learn modular courses with partners and developing some access agreements with external organizations like EBCU. So what would the next steps be for camera and EBCU? around uh, access to learn and discover. Um, member organizations would need to register expressions of interest um, and start conversations through whatever channel is appropriate. Um, I'm still learning about the EBCU, so um, don't take the way I'm expressing things here as, uh, 
as, as absolute fact. Um, whatever channels are appropriate, that would be the right way to do it. Um, establishing a flexible business model. Um, flexible in terms of, I recognize that not all member organizations are the same size, have the same membership or have the same capacity. And anything we do would need to respect and reflect that. Uh, we'd have to then negotiate some agreements, our memorandums of understanding to be established and begin service delivery for member organizations. Right, any questions? Fantastic, thank you, uh, uh, um, Alex, that was brilliant. Um, so for, for, for folk, if you hadn't already done so, uh, have a look at the chat window. If you prefer to type your question, I'm happy to um, say it out to Alex. Uh, if, if people prefer want to uh, put their hand up, um, that's fine. We can do it that way. It, re it really doesn't matter. But one thing I would say, possibly, Alex, could you tell me a little bit about what some of the content is currently on there so people can see, get some idea of, of what's on there? Could that be, that might be useful? Okay, so I've got two things. I've got some, um, there's a couple of, there's a couple of people, um, I think. Oh, that's in the chat. Um, I've got some web windows up and I've got information about the uh, content that's coming up in the next few months that other people don't know about. So what I'll do is I'll start by showing people on my screen um, the kind of examples of what we've got up recently and I can let you into what's coming up soon. How about that? That sounds fantastic. And what I would do, if people want to put the questions in the chat window um, uh, to make it logical, I can uh, uh, feed those back to you, Alex, once uh, once you've covered that bit. Magic. Okay. So um, this is the, the current landing page. Uh, we're in the process of developing uh, uh, different navigation, but this is what we've got at the moment. Um, this is accessed by the top line. Um, you can click on learn and discover, or you can go straight to one of the tiers. At the moment, this is the navigation. So as you might recognize this from my presentation, uh, people can now navigate to the different tiers and look at the increasingly um, more in-depth content or go straight for the introductory stuff. Um, one of the things that we wanted to do from the beginning was to just give people a bit of an understanding about what, what's the importance of learning more about drinks. Um, it's a conversation we've had regularly on the festival floors um, with the Discovery Zones program. And I wanted to get a trusted voice to uh, talk about that. So we've got Emma Inch. She recorded a whole, it's essentially a podcast. Uh, we call them audio guides on Learn and Discover, not to confuse with our podcast that we've got. Um, and that's Emma going around the Great British Beer Festival in 2019, talking to a whole host of, of stakeholders. Um, the chief exec, my boss, Tom Stainer, um, people from malt uh, distributors, uh, hot merchants, um and brewers and what have you so just to introducing people to the idea of learning more about drinks um then we've got um this is what the navigation currently looks like um as i said we're going to be moving uh, and improving things over the next year but at the moment this is what the basics tier looks like we've got a whole bunch of um different topics and basically people can click on one of these um and navigate to um to something of their interest so at the moment, if it behaves, I'm going to click on something and if it behaves itself, great. And if it doesn't, I've got something else to show you. Um, because uh, often when you're doing some of these video conferencing and you try and use the internet, it just says no. <laughs> but here we are. So this is a piece that we had recently. Um, it's in support of, uh, of a book we've put out, but anything we do like that is not just some kind of cynical, um, you know, uh, promotional exercise it has to fit into providing educational outcomes for people reading it. So this is about beer art and branding um, and based on a book from Pete Brown. Uh, again, a name I'm sure many of you already know, but um, he's the current chair of the British Guild of Beer Writers. Um, and uh, he's wrote a very personal account of, of beer branding um, sort of from the 18th to 20th century and beyond. Um, and uh, so that, this is kind of what the experience is like when you navigate to one of our pieces of content. Um, that's a basic piece of content. That's a, what I call text and photo. Um, we also have uh, videos. So this is uh, somebody we've started working with recently. She is an absolute powerhouse, 20 odd years working in the food and drink sector. And um, latterly has been doing um, 
beer and food um, related events for private members clubs in London. And she's been doing a, she's this, the latest piece of content we've got here is beer and food pairing video. Um, it's all hosted on Vimeo, but it's locked in. So people can only watch it from our website. So it's exclusive to us. Um, and then if I, there we go. This is a piece in the uh, connoisseur tier. Um, so this is by Pete Brown again. Uh, just so happens and this is a history of India pale ale um, a very uh, um, there's lots of myths and myth information that kind of circulates around IPA and um, Pete really wanted to go into a deep dive into um, the history of it and it's a it's a no holds bar account talking about um, the British and in India and um, and the history um, behind the, the beer style um, and as you can see it's a much longer um, more in-depth article um, and you know taking the opportunity to bust some myths which is something that we like to do um, and uh, and then going into beyond the history of the myth busting um, this, this one happens to look at a style guide um, and uh, that's, uh, that's the, a connoisseur level piece so that just gives you a flavour of the overall experience of the website and, and how, we, how we navigate um what i uh would like to do i've just got a little um section of further information just trying to anticipate people's questions and things i might have skated yeah. over alex i'm happy to uh, uh forward you the questions I i'm keeping a note of them so if you're happy with it to, to save you having to sort of swap too many screens that's fine i just wanted to go over these two slides and then i'm done yeah. um just stay, sticking on the content so just so um uh, people can uh, get an idea of what's coming up in the next couple of months. So it just so happens that the, a lot of the connoisseur level pieces seem to accidentally shift towards the end of the year. So um, at the moment coming up in um, December, um, we've got uh, some continuations of existing series. Um, we've got the conclusion of uh, the What's in Your Glass series by Emma Inch. It's an audio guides. Um, about the four main ingredients of beer. Uh, we've got a fantastic video, two-part video series on beer, barrel, aging and maturation. I'm skipping over the side of stuff here just, just because I'm trying to stay in people's um, interests. We've got a history of lager by Mark Dredge. Um, that's read by Emma Inch. And we've got beer tasting for enthusiasts, which, which goes out on uh, New Year's Eve. So that should be a lot of fun. Um, looking to early next year, We've got um, sort of more on beer barrel aging. I don't know why that's in there, because that's not happening then. Uh, we've got diverse voices, looking at diversity in the beer industry. We've got the Andy Parker home brewing series starts. And we also start to explore um, a whole range of issues that tie into our 50th. And we're sure we've got the author of our 50th book coming in there. Um, we've got an introduction to fire brewing, which will be really interesting in February, by Ruben Ed Silva. Uh, and we've got a load of... Um, different uh um bits of, of content coming up um in in february and beyond so that's where we are with that um i'd like to see the questions now brett if you may yeah sure so uh i'll go through and the first one is uh what is uh an mou and thank jan has uh, responded mou Mem memorandum of understanding agreements yes um so there are i've i've, I've developed them in different uh, roles in the past and they're uh, an agreement between two organisations that one organisation is going to provide specific services and benefits to another organisation for pre-agreed, um, whether it's fees or exchanges of services. OK, uh, Mayu Kais has asked, will the material be available in other languages? Uh, absolutely. If, if we make um, um, relationships with... Uh, other other countries, sort of different countries from, from the EBCU, um, we can definitely look into working. And something like that would be part of a memorandum of understanding between camera and another organisation. So at the moment, all our existing content is in English. Um, if we are able to open access to the membership of an EBC member organisation through a memorandum of understanding, that could then feature um, in, in, in the agreement that we're able to work with their members to translate some of our content and i think it's fair to say uh, alex this is work in progress and um, we wanted to see uh, what the reaction of uh, of ebcu 
uh, delegates and, and, and members of our organization was to this, to see what they thought of this. Yeah. And then they would come back to the, the project working group who we've already mentioned. Yeah. And then, then through Angeline, we can take that through to the executive. So I guess the, 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 the real response is what, what do you think of this? Is this something that is useful to you, your organization? Will it help your organization develop and, uh, well, let's carry on. Uh, next question. Um, could we do stuff on the beer, beer styles of Europe? Um, so Tim has uh, done quite a lot of work for ABC yes. on that. And uh, yes. so with that question, really. Yes, so um, absolutely. Um, and it ties in with work that we've already got planned and have agreed budget for um, for the next year. So um, I'll be very honest. Our current camera beer styles page is is not great. It's uh, in, in need of modernization. And what we're doing over the next year is we are using the, um, the new camera beer judging styles as a, as a guide for the first steps of this to completely renovate and replace um, the camera beer styles page. So um, if anybody has an opportunity to see an example of kind of where we're headed with this, it would be the... Um, the US website craftbeer.com and uh, what people would need to do is um, I can try and look at it here but um, I'm let's have a look um, so uh, that's, that's not why let's have a look okay okay that's getting to that so um, craftbeer.com provides this tool um, for people um, getting into their beer styles. So the, the, I want to answer the question in two ways. This is just to give you an indication of kind of where we're headed in, with beer styles in general. Um, I'm aiming to replicate and improve on this model. Um, everybody I've shown it to, we, we just can't understand why you would ever put a beer against the black background, but that's just... <laughs> that's just uh, <laughs> um but uh having physical uh, representations of beer styles and you know preferred glassware and then being able to click in um and look at an in-depth profile of a beer style um i believe for many people this is too much information um and we'd be aiming to provide you know a much more basic um profile with a with a bit of information about each one um, initially for the camera beer styles but it's very important to understand that my remit is about helping people learn about all beer um, with a mind to what the campaign stands for so what what's really helpful about the new camera beer styles is that they um, they're very outward looking and forward looking in the sense that um, they include what many people would say might be like world beer styles or or, or beer styles from europe um so this year we're going to start with um, a whole bunch of different beer styles from the UK, um, including a couple of examples of international beer styles. Uh, and in a, in, a, in a page in an experience that is very much like this, um, but obviously without those horrid black backgrounds. Um, then we'd also like to uh, feature something on the, the European beer styles. Um, so I've already started conversations um, within the governance structure to encourage somebody, maybe even like Tim, to um, uh, start something off with that, providing information about European beer styles. So it's a two-pronged approach. We can feature content on it, but we're building a resource as well where we can feature European beer styles in the near future. I hope that makes sense. Thanks, Alex. Um, I just wanted to, for people who've uh, arrived at the workshop a little bit later, a uh, welcome. I'm sorry you missed the... Uh, the introduction don't worry you didn't miss anything important it was only me but the one thing i did want to mention was that there's an evaluation form if you can complete it before you uh you know as soon as possible it's at the top of this chat window and if you want to ask your questions uh, through the chat window that's fine so next question um so um the question from, well it's a question statement from andreas uh, i'm impressed uh, it must be a lot of work. How many folks work on the projects? And I think this is a real key one now, Alex. How can people contribute? 
Okay, so um, so two two questions really. Uh, at the moment, um, I am in control and develop all the um, the professionally created content um, with support from our IT, our communications team, and uh, in some ways our events team as well. Um, and through the volunteer content, we have a uh, a peer review group. So it's a new group within camera that I set up with a couple of committees last year. Uh, our technical advisory group and our Real Ale Cider and Perry Campaigns Committee. We love our acronyms at camera. Um, and I hope, well, hopefully I've got that one right. Um, and we specifically recruited people with expertise onto this peer review group for one really important reason. In the short time I've been inside camera, um, one, a few things have been really clear. Uh, it's an organisation based around the love of something and that it's very much for something and that there's a hell of a lot of expertise within the organization but there's a perception gap outside of camera um and about around the credibility and the positive contributions camera has to make in, in beer knowledge generally and so what i wanted to do was get a process to support um people from volunteer communities to develop content and have that uh, go through essentially like an academic peer review process, but with a with a bunch of people we recruited um, to enable us to publish that content at the same level as professional, professionally commissioned content. With the mission being, we're saying to the outside world, "Look, yeah, this is what we're capable of, um, and it's just as credible as anything that we might commission professionally." Um, and uh, and there's there's some very encouraging signs that that's working. Um, the the second question is. Once people, once member organizations start to develop relationships with us, um, we can um, bring in um, volunteers and encourage people to start developing volunteer content um, for Learn and Discover um, from different e e EBCU members. I don't, we don't necessarily have to wait till then, um, but we're just getting the peer review group up and running. Um, they've kind of hit, hit speed kind of over the past couple of months, really. Uh, the, main, the main priority is getting the the professional source stuff going because it's it's the, the the big leverage point for getting people to to join and access the content and then we've we've worked latterly uh, towards the end of this year in beefing up the uh, the volunteer offer and that's in a much a stronger stronger place now so if anybody has got um uh, uh an idea or they are um uh, keen to develop some volunteer content um, it'd be great for them to get in touch before we develop any sort of agreements between camera and EBCU members, just to get an idea of the kind of influx we could expect. Um, and there might even be scope to uh, get it get it in there um, before we develop any agreements. I, I just need to get a sense of of how much would be out there and, and, and what the kind of demand would be. But yeah, there's definitely ways we can do that. Thanks, Alex. Uh, next question, uh, comment. Um, it looks great. Uh, this is from John. Uh, looks great. Knowledge is power. I think we all agree with that. Brilliant. Uh, from Hans Peter, um, can you tell us a little bit about your Learn and Discover activities beyond the, uh, this online uh, resource? So I guess that Hans Peter's been to see you perform. Yes. The Great British Beer Festival Winter. And uh, do you want to tell us a bit, a little about what you do and how you're getting uh, camera branches involved? Yes. So. Um... One of the key things I mentioned right at the beginning of this uh, presentation was um, the launch of the Learning Discovery Programme based on membership attributes. Um, and it's important that I kind of just discuss them very briefly because uh, they underpin everything we're doing and it provides a greater understanding of why we did, why we rolled out and developed the, uh, the Learning Discovery Programme at, uh, at festivals. So... Um, when I came into the organisation, there was a there was a, a real need to provide um, a concrete commitment for what we expect people to walk away with. So, if people are coming onto la uh, camera learn and discover online, or if they're coming to a camera festival, which you know, God willing, we'll get to do next year, um, what are they going to walk away with? What's our promise? What's our commitment to people, whether they're a member or a non-member? What what are we actually trying to achieve here? Um, so we developed 
uh, internally, externally, I had many, many conversations with branches and uh, around the country and brewers and members of our executive just to try and gauge what do people need to know to become more knowledgeable about beer, cider, perry and pubs, um, to become more of an advocate or of an active member is something that's been around for a long time. People talk about active members. Um, and how do you provide pathways into becoming more uh, aware and knowledgeable about beer? Because as many of you will know, you get to a beer festival, there's hundreds, if not thousands of different beers there. Which one do you try? How do you know what you like? You know, if you've just come with a group of people a lot more knowledgeable than you, how do you find out, you know, what's what? You know, how do you know what the ingredients are that are going to beer? You know, um, if you've been into beer for 40 years, but there's some basic stuff that you've never really um, found out about it, um, who do you ask those questions? You know, is, is how is somebody going to treat you respectfully in building that knowledge, whatever stage you're at on the drinker's journey? So although there was a, a thirst, if you'll forgive the pun, for um, content when I came into the organisation, um, I felt that our strongest point as an organisation was our festivals programme. Cameras provided educational opportunities at festivals for decades. This is not something that's that started with me. Uh, far, far from it. Um, and everything we've done um, since I started in the role has been based on that hard graft over many, many years and a massive network of educators and experts that were already in place. So uh, in all those conversations with people when I began, in order to build that commitment, we needed to figure out what are the attributes that somebody ideally as a member or a member of the public would build in engaging with the campaign, say at our festival. So I'm just gonna go through these briefly. You're gonna have a copy of this presentation. This is being recorded, but I'm just gonna very briefly go through these and then talk a little bit more about the Discovery Zones program at festivals. So just be aware that these underpin everything we're doing. If anybody creates any content for us, they have to have sight of these and they're inside the content guidelines as well. So you underpin everything we're doing. And also all of my work, working with people within uh, camera communications, camera books, volunteers, you name it. Um, so membership attribute number one, an understanding of the ingredients and processes behind the production of beer, cider and perry from field to glass. So my background working in um, food and heritage uh, engagement programs, um, both in uh, uh, local government and universities, um, there's often a massive gap between the things people are interested in and their experience of where they come from. Um, and that's no, no different for drinkers. You know, we all have different expertise and interests, um, but it's, it's, it's a key learning point about where do these things come from and what goes into making them. Okay. Um, attribute number two. So an awareness of how such processes develop the new unique features and characteristics that distinguish the kind of things that we all campaign and love uh, from seemingly similar products. Um, what is the difference if we're campaigning on these angles between um, um, some, something mass produced from, from say a, um, a supermarket or a corner shop and something that's made by somebody down the road in an independent um, situation? Number three, um, confidence in people's ability to discern the condition of beers, sides and perries served in the on-trade establishments to demand a higher caliber of brewing, cellaring and dispense. Four, really key, literacy in the historic, social and economic importance of pubs, beers, sides and perries, and also in the regulatory challenges and drivers for camera campaigns. This could not be any more important than it is now. Uh, advocacy uh, for pubs, producers and sellers of real ale, sides and perries, uh, for our, uh, our campaigns, our aims and objectives, which applies to, I'm sure, to any member of uh, the EBCU. Um, and latterly, accreditation in established and respected industry training, um, building credence and well-founded authority within the membership um, via the training we develop ourselves or access to external training. And then... Uh, Basically, empowering people to act in their volunteer um, roles or capacity as educational ambassadors um, for camera within, within volunteer roles. So the Learning and Discovery Programme 
uh, started in January um, 2019. I met with members of the Manchester um, Beer, Fe Beer and Cider Festival Working Party back in November of 2018, so a couple of months after I'd started in post, um, with a mind that I'd have to spend a lot of time building trust with the membership in order to bring something new to the festival's offer. Um, in, in, in what has become an established pattern, um, the, the working party members that I met and subsequently everybody else at the, at the working party in Manchester were just very open. So whilst I started talking to them about doing something in January of 2020, by the end of the conversation, I ended up planning for something in January 2019, a full year earlier than I had expected. Uh, which was incredibly positive, and that really set the tone for the rest of the programme. So um, Manchester was a pilot. We had uh, one brewer um, who showcased a um, an imperial, oh, sorry, a barrel-aged stout across two forms of dis dispense, cask and keg. Um, we offered tastings to people um, so they can see the difference and how dispense affected the beer on their palates. Uh, it was myself and some volunteers and staff members that were that, that staffed the space. Um, very informal. Um, we had um, a range of literature on the stand and I managed to secure some hops and malts from, from some sponsors, hops and malts merchants. And people were encouraged to talk to the brewer who was present, a member of the brewing team. Um, and he guided people through informal conversations, as did we all, through the tastings, the comparative tastings of the beer, and encourage people to uh, play with and smell, handle the, the different hops that we had available, uh, not just British varieties, we had uh, European and, and American varieties, um, and a range of hop, uh, malts that people could taste. Um, and particularly, we encouraged people to taste the malts that went into the beer that was on tasting. And so people could then connect that experience with what they were drinking and the conversations we're having. Um, what's really key about the um, discovery zones as we started to roll them out uh, is that they were about making sure there was something for everyone. So the brewer is there. If somebody's super, super knowledgeable, they're going to be able to ask a brewer, the person who made the beer, those really in-depth questions that only a brewer would know. Uh, and then you have other people that staff the space with a range of knowledge um, and hopefully, you know, men and women. So everybody feels you know, comfortable approaching people and asking, you know, any question. The whole overriding ethos is that there are no stupid questions um, on that, whether you've been drinking for 40 years or 40 minutes, there should be something for you to interact with there. Uh, in terms of the program for the rest of the year, um, we were at something like um, nine festivals uh, looking at, we were at uh, Manchester, we're at the Great British Beer Festival, we're at Thanet, um, Cambridge, we were at the Great Welsh Festival, uh, Nottingham, and uh, a few others in between that I've, I've, I've probably uh, forgotten about. Um, we had something like 45 different breweries uh, featuring a whole host of different beers across, you know, five plus types of dispense formats, so kegs, casks, uh, membrane kegs like Eco Keg and uh, Key Keg, bottles and cans. Um, we also featured a bunch of cider stuff as well. Um, and uh, every day we had a brewer present and a whole bunch of uh, increasingly experienced members from our, our, our volunteer community. Um, and what we started to do was set it up so we could only do so many. So after the, the Manchester pilot, we published it to our membership and encouraged festivals to get in touch to see if they wanted to participate. And the response was such that we had to cap it for the first year. Obviously, it was only this is only that was only one part of my job, as you can surmise. And um, it was important that we didn't overcommit in the first year in order to actually do a decent job of it. Um, and so what I then started to communicate to people that if they wanted to take part in 2020, uh, they could start then coming to their festivals, building up experience, working in the, the 2019 uh, discovery zones. And then um, they could then be, be classed as qualified 
and then go on to become a learning and discovery coordinator um, in charge of the program at their own festival. So the way it worked is that people would come and get the experience. They then go back to their own working party, organizing their own festival. And I would support them through the first one. Uh, going towards 2020, uh, we uh, allowed a further two or three festivals um, we wanted to expand to the, the, the different nations of the United Kingdom. So I started talking to Scotland and uh, Belfast and we had people, um, they bought, you know, tickets to come along and, and, and uh, volunteer at festivals. People have bought plane tickets to, to volunteer at the, uh, um, the Great Welsh Festival, which was supposed to be, I think, this April, which unfortunately we were unable to put on. So there was a lot put in place this year to then start to hand it over to the membership. And we had sort of something like 30 odd um, learning discovery officers, which were people who just staffed a space or coordinators. And they're people who'd come along and they completed one or two days with the mind of then going off and, and implementing it at their own festival. Um, every learning discovery zone featured a range of hops and malts for people to interact with. Uh, we've got sponsorship from um, Charles Farm Hop Merchants and Chris Malt for the ingredients. And um, every day we featured at least one brewer um, uh, featuring at least one beer across a range of dispense. Different breweries would take different um, levels of initiative. And so some brewers would bring along a few different beers across a few different levels of dispense, uh, which enable people to you know, if you if you know, if somebody comes up to a bar and they say, "Well, have you got any dark beer?" and you say no, and they're a massive dark beer fan, they're, they're going to just walk away. So, increasingly, people brewers would uh, would bring along um, beers of different types. So they'd have a dark beer and a light beer, or an alcohol-free beer and a and an alcohol beer, uh, and and develop the offer as we went along. So it became increasingly um, engaging for people. Uh, we had a hell of a lot of people come through the. Um, the, uh, the the discovery zones numbering in the thousands um, it was it, with the levels of interest we got at quite a lot of the festivals it was impossible to um, stand there with a clicker um, just trying to count how many people were coming through oh. well, Alex just a question I mean yeah. you brought us to a nice point actually I'm going to go through a couple of other points that have been mentioned but one I don't know if you've got a photograph of uh, because certain people may have seen the, the Discovery Zone, but uh, for those who haven't, if you can sh show a photograph of... Uh, of okay, what... I, I'm going to st stop sharing for a second while I root around my files. Okay. I'm, I'm going to just mention, a, a, a go through a couple of the other points that have been made. I think there's a lot of interest with people willing to share with you information for, 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 for the... Um, uh, for the project, so we uh, example was the Finnish ancient beer sati. Nice. Uh, there's a four-hour seminar ready to go. In, it's English in English. Um, there's an op uh, uh, an opportunity to develop uh, the shop style, uh, which is a Polish style, uh, a Polish beer style. Um, um, so I think there's a lot of people asking questions about you know that I think they're keen to share. I think we all are. So Fantastic. maybe I think the option, is, what I would say to people is, if you want to share that either with myself, Angeline, Hans Peter, or um, uh, uh, Marcus, uh, we will we'll take that forward because essentially we're 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 interested in what what you what you have to say. There's a question from Ale about foreign members pay forty one pound fifty. I think that's a the camera membership. I'm not sure the overseas camera membership. Have yeah. you considered what organisations out there have to pay per member? I think I think this is one of the options up for discussion, and uh, we'll we'll look at um, the EBCU involvement. I, I guess the the next thing is to hand it over to uh, Bo and the rest of the executive. Hello, Bo, and and everyone else from the executive, and uh, say to you guys, well, you know, this is the level of interest. How, how do you want to proceed? So we've got a couple of minutes left. I'd like to finish this at eight o'clock. Um, so is, Alex, is there anything uh, else? Otherwise I will just ask people to uh, click on the link to complete the evaluation. The other thing I will just mention is um, we'd like your reaction to this. Have you found it useful? Would you like more of them? And if so, what sort of topics would you like discussed?
and could you be a presenter would you be interested in presenting and 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 um talking about your 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 topic um but uh alex uh, i'll hand over to you and then um but i did want to say thank you alex i think it's been about absolutely brilliant presentation but um i'll hand over to you alex if you want to pick up on any of those things magic thank you um yes yeah, so um one of the things that uh, would be interesting you know as we go forward is talking to people about um anything that they have already um obviously one of the things that we have to think about is uh consistency of user experience so um the reason we haven't taken things that are pre-recorded already is to just try and guarantee that everything's of a similar quality um and that's that's a, a journey i've been on uh dealing with people who do it for a living and and having to give them feedback that you need you need to reshoot that buddy or um because you know we, we, we're, we're paying for this and it has to be sort of a consistent quality across the board um and uh, that's a conversation i've had with people who are award-winning beer writers and, and broadcasters um so that's one thing to consider about about um the not, not the quality of the content but the quality well that's important but the um the quality of the the video and all that kind of thing um but if anybody's got anything they want to talk about you know whatever the appropriate channels are if people want my email address i'm very happy to talk to people um in that way uh about anything and also i'm very interested because you know as any drinker is you know on some level we've, we've got a lot to learn um and i'd love to learn about anything of interest to to you guys so um the uh, the polish and finnish examples have just whetted my appetite i'm sure that's just the tip of the iceberg so um very interested in that um I, what i'm doing is i'm just bringing up a few um uh, images and um and then particularly i want to just find the uh, the images of, of gbbf as well and i've got some examples of uh, some, some smaller um some smaller festivals um so bear with me i will be just a second so what I'm going to do, um, carry on, Alex. I will just yeah. um, promote the next uh, workshop, which is uh, from Marcus, who's going to do a workshop on. Um, uh, uh, it's basically called Tips for a New Era of Online Beer Tasting Events, including tastings and judging. So it's basically how to put your tasting and judging event online. That will happen. Uh, next year and it's uh it's basically we want people to um it's oh, sorry the date i should say it's the thursday the 28th of january you can find information on the ebc website under events and you'll be able to book from that as from tomorrow so we would encourage you to to book for that event that's marcus who's going to do the next event i'll hand over it back to you uh alex Okay, um, right. I, I, you have to forgive me while I uh, move around the uh, the different images I've got, but um, I'm going to share my screen again, and then hopefully we can just uh, get a flavour of some of the. Uh, uh, there we go. Right. So I'll just take because uh, I can see I can only see Brett at the moment. If I can get a nod that you can see a picture of somebody sniffing some hops there, Brett. Excellent. Okay, so I've got some examples initially from um, uh, the Great British Beer Festival. Um, if I can, is it now going to navigate along there? Um, no, it's not. Sorry, bear with me. Um, okay. So um, that's uh, Fergus Fitzgerald, the uh, head brewer of Adnams. Um, they were tasting um their ghost ship cask alongside their 0.5 percent i believe it is i'm sure brett correct me um their 0.5 uh, percent so alcohol low alcohol free al um ghost ship on keg you can see a couple of things here you can see the traditional hand pump in the background and you can also see uh our kegerator which can dispense real ale via uh key keg or any kind of member membrane keg You've also got uh, Mike, who is the chair of the working party for a smaller festival, which is Thanet, um, which uh, occurs down in Margate over the Easter bank holiday weekend. 
uh, once you get festivals up and running, I can wholeheartedly recommend that um, right next to the sea. Absolutely fantastic range as well from all across the country. Um, Punch is well above its weight. And he's there um, supporting because he's already run, helped me run the uh, programme at his own festival a few months beforehand. So it's a really great idea of the, the success of the programme. Uh, you could also see in the background there some of the assets that we started to develop. So they're pretty, but they're also educational. If people are learning whilst not learning, that's the ideal outcome, right? Um, and uh, we've got a uh, brewing process diagram that was developed in a concert with our technical advisory group, just checking that we weren't doing anything crazy um, with, the, with the brewing process. And also behind us is a big banner, just, just very simply displaying the full core ingredients of, uh, of beer. Um, that's a very happy Andy from uh, Hamilton Brewing in London. Um, and another camera member in the background supporting us, which is fantastic. A um, little bit of uh, diversity. It was the, uh, the sponsor of the festival um, last year was the uh, LGBT um, rights uh, NGO Stonewall, which is fantastic. It's just this an idea of the, uh, the, the space at the festival. So we've got a display of hops and malts over here. We've got uh, members uh, talking to people. Um, we've got members of the brewery dispensing beer there. Uh, that was another member of the Adnams crew. And we've also got some uh, educational aids in terms of dispense. So one of the things that I found interesting over the last year was um, comments that, um, you know, particularly from professional beer writers as well, that drinkers don't care about dispense. They just want to drink it. Uh, and that is fundamentally untrue. Um, the amount and variety of people who want to talk about dispense when given the opportunity um, is striking. One example being at the Cambridge Beer Festival, I, um, my wife came to volunteer and she used to work in education. So I gave her a brief on key kegs. She's heard me waffling about it at home. And uh, I was busy dispensing tastings with, with a brewer on the uh, bar. And uh, a very tall, young, blonde lady came running up to the bar with her hands in the air, kind of almost screaming. And I said, what, you, what, what's going on? Are you all right? What, what's that? She said, well, your wife's just been talking to me about key keg. I never thought I'd be interested in this. It's amazing. It's so interesting. And I was like, would you like to try some beer? Or, or there's some hops over there. And she ran off to, to, to uh, play with the hops. So it's just an example of putting things in people's uh, way so they can engage with them on their own terms. And kind of just a small example of engaging with people and and uh, and seeing what they do with it in their own in their own way um so again there's a little shot of mike there um and a few different people coming in um and it's also you know i'm sure ebc you member organizations are similar uh this chap is a biochemist and i didn't find out till afterwards so you can get some supremely qualified people from the volunteer um base to actually just hang around seem very accessible there's a hell of a lot going on up here um, to pass on. Um, and uh, yeah, um, that's this is a great story. Um, I fought very hard to make sure that we had non-members that could come volunteer at Great British Beer Festival. Uh, this is Kate, uh, Kate Nash from Brighton. She's worked in um, brewing in France and the UK. She wasn't a member. But she was having such a great day on the opening day. This is Harvey's. That's the head brewer, Miles Jenner, just in the background there. Um, and she decided to join halfway through the day. So this is John Cottrell, our head of membership. Um, and that's Kate joining camera right there and then on the iPad. So it's just a, it's a small example of the kind of experiences you can have, um, particularly when drawing people outside the membership, um, which is fantastic. So um, just little examples and... Um, from the day. Uh, this was what it looked like most of the time. It was like a, a, a crazy house party um, with, uh, with um, tastings and brewer interactions and that kind of thing. So very well received um, and uh, quite the throng and a range of people of ages um, and genders. So that's that looks, that looks a good, good place to, um, to, 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 um, to finish, I think. I think, Excellent. is that okay, Alex? Is there anything else that you, you want to contribute or anything no i just i just thank you for the opportunity and i look forward to carrying the uh, the conversation with uh, number one um around uh, learn and discover and um member organizations interested in in gaining access 
Uh, and number two, anybody wants to approach me offline and talk about anything, um, I am accessible. I am crazily busy, but I will get back to you. Um, and, you know, sometimes uh, a Zoom conversation um, after four o'clock is probably going to be a lot more effective than, than an email. So if you ever want to just see this face again, um, I'm, I'm more than happy to do that. So thank you very much. Brilliant. Thank, thanks, Alex. And, and on behalf of everybody here, I think we all want to say thank you very much. So we'll all sort of raise our glasses and say cheers. My beer's empty because I've drunk it. But nevertheless, um, thanks very much. And uh, thanks for everyone. If you can complete the evaluation form and uh, do join us for the next workshop, which uh, is on the EBCU website. Uh, so do have a look and we look forward to seeing you so soon. Cheers. Bye. Thank you. See you next time.